Example 18.5 asks us to consider a solution of sodium acetate with an apparent concentration of 10 to the minus 2 molar. This of course is a salt of acetic acid and the pKa for acetic acid is 4.76. We will use this pKa for acetic acid even though we're making a solution of sodium acetate. The problem asks us to figure out what the pH is and what the ion concentrations are in this solution. My first step is to get the Cillin diagram ready. So let me switch to that. And I need to draw in the lines for strong acid and strong base. So I've got my ruler out and I'm going to sketch the line for strong acid. And I don't worry about the little curve down at low concentrations down here. I don't worry about that. I just put a straight line and then I get the one for strong base. Alright. And I label them. Alright, now I've got a few calculations that I need to handle. I'll go back to my other page. So step one was to put in the um, the lines for hydronium and for hydroxide. Step two, I'm going to do the material balance. All right. So the concentration of sodium will be 10 to the minus 2 molar. And also the total acetate concentration will be 10 to the minus 2 molar. I will use this balance when I draw the diagram because you can see the total acetate needs to be 10 to the minus 2 molar and when one of these gets small then the other one will equal 10 to the minus 2. Next I have the equilibrium relations. And Ka always in the acid form. The products will be acetate and H plus or hydronium. And the reactants will be acetic and water, but water has an activity of one. And the other uh, K that we have is for water. That's going to be H plus and OH minus and 10 to the minus 14. Now this this equation I'm going to represent with the lines that I'm going to draw on the diagram in, next in step 5 and this one is already represented with the lines that I've drawn on the diagram already. Before I do more drawing though I've got one more step and that's to write down the charge balance. I've got positive ions and I've got negative ions. Now I'll come back to this and manipulate this to derive the proton condition which is a combination of material balance and charge balance. Alright, the next step is step 5 which is drawing the diagram which often causes the most confusion. And actually it's one of the easier steps after you've learned how to do it. The first step is to create a system point. And I create the system point at the pKa, which is 4.76, but at the uh, overall concentration of the acid, on the apparent concentration. So uh, I'm going to put a, a, a system point here at 4.76 and 10 to the minus 2. All right. Then I'm going to create another point that is 3 tenths of a log unit down. And I usually just eyeball that. All right, I'm going to put a circle there. All right, and both of these will help me in the construction. I'm going to go over one pH unit to the right, and I'm going to draw a straight line over this way that will represent 
the deprotonated form, or acetate. I'm going to go one pH unit over this way, 3.76, and this will represent the acid form. So low pH will push the proton onto the acid. High pH will pull the proton off. Next, I'm going to draw a diagonal line with a slope of minus 1, because this is one proton coming off. It's going to have a slope of minus 1 in either direction, um, and I do it relative to the system point. Uh, many students tend to do it relative to this point. No, you want to do it relative to this point, and you can do this easily. This is 4.76. I'm going to go to 5.76 and down one square. All right and just draw enough that you can get a straight line. Now I'm going to start drawing it, but I'm going to stop one pH unit away. All right, And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. 3.76, 2.76, and I'll go down here to 1.76, and I, I draw that. and I stop one pH unit away. Okay, One pH unit away uh, is 90 percent titrated. So this is 50 percent titrated, 90, and then two pH units is 99 percent. So um, now I'm going to sketch in by hand from this point. I'm going to go through my construction circle on either side. All right, and that completes the cylinder diagram, and now we're ready to use it. Okay, so step five was the cylinder diagram, and I've got that constructed. Step six is to develop the proton condition. Now, in step six, what I want to do is I want to go back to my uh, charge balance in step four and look also at the material balance and try to eliminate all the largest numbers. It sounds kind of backwards when you first do it, but we're trying to put constants in for the largest numbers. And you can see that sodium here is a fixed number, uh, it's 10 to the minus 2, so let's put that in. And we also know that we can relate the, the um, acetate to the um, acetic acid th with this constant 10 to the minus 2, so let's put those in. Okay, so you can see that I put the values in, and the reason for putting large values in and substituting for the large numbers is because now those large numbers will drop out. Now, the other thing I like to do typically is put the proton condition so that both sides are additive. You can see I've got a subtraction on this side. I'm going to move it over to the other side. And now this becomes my proton condition and I need to have a balance between hydronium and, and uh, acetic acid with hydroxide. Let's look at the diagram. Alright, this step always takes some reasoning and I'm going to shade these lines. This is the negative line that I need to balance in the proton condition. Okay, and it needs to ba be balanced with the, the hydronium plus the acetic acid. And you can see that in the range that I'm drawing here that the acetic acid is about three orders of magnitude larger than the hydronium. Okay, one, two, three. All right, so this is uh, one one thousandth of this. So I can actually ignore the H plus in the range that I'm going to find a solution and the important solution then is to balance the HOAC with the hydroxide. And so the correct answer for the pH is this point right here, and that is a pH of about 8.4. All right, and you can see that the dominant ion in, in solution is going to be the acetate and that it's going to be almost all in the acetate form, virtually all in the acetate form. The amount of acetic acid is going to be, in the textbook where I've drawn it more carefully, uh, 10 to the minus 5.6, and 
and um, likewise that will balance with the the OH and the amount of H plus is going to be negligible.